He walks wrong with Mox because they say that his opponent is sleeping. His opponent is stagnant. So he has come to mop him out. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Joseph Adderley. Well, it looks like half of Barbados is here tonight. And I want to say good night to all of us. And tonight I get not only to say good night to us, but I get to say welcome to you to St. Michael West. And we receive you warmly in your very large numbers. And we're encouraged by your presence that there's a movement on in St. Michael West to retake this seat for the Barbados Labour Party and in the interests of the people of St. Michael West. I want to thank those who have expressed in very clear terms their support for me as we've gone to house to house and on the streets as we have met and encountered each other. But I want to ask you to be very careful on February 21st to go to vote. Because support has never taken anybody to victory without the vote. And we need for you to go early to the polling stations across this constituency. And cast your vote for the Barbados Labour Party. For a better tomorrow. And for Joseph Athley. I ask you that humbly. And I thank you most. Sincerely. But I wish to thank those who are working very closely around me. And I want you to know that when we win this thing, that will be our victory. Not Joe Athley's victory, but our victory. Because you work very hard day and night to make sure that we reverse what occurred in 2008 when we by a narrow margin lost this seat to the incumbent representative.
the decision that we will reverse in short order in about 10 days from now. And I thank you for your commitment to that cause. It is not only my cause. It is your cause. It is our cause. And so I thank you, Team St. Michael West. In countries like Barbados, the story of development is a story of institutional building. It's a story of infrastructural modernization. It's the story of economic wealth creation. It's the story of social wealth formation. That is what the Barbados Labour Party traditionally has been about. That is what the Arthur administration for 14 years was about. These just come fellows have been bold enough to say that they have done more in five years than the Arthur administration done in 14 years. If you look at social wealth, social capital formation, they lose that battle. If you look at economic wealth creation, they lose that battle. If you look at institutional building, they lose that battle. If you look at infrastructural modernization, they lose that battle. Every facet of modern development of a small developing state, when you measure our performance, against theirs, they are behind. And we far exceed and excel anything that they have been able to achieve in their five years. But in our country context here in Barbados, much of our development and much of our politics is the story of what is happening in St. Michael or the story of what has taken place in St. Michael. And St. Michael West constitutes the largest constituency in urban Barbados, in St. Michael. And much, therefore, of the story of politics and development in St. Michael is about St. Michael West. And I hope to illustrate tonight that what the Barbados Labour Party is about is about development of a society. It's about the development of a people. And much of our success has to do with the development of urban Barbados. Now when you come to St. Michael and you talk the politics of development. When you come to St. Michael and you talk about country development or national development. You have to address the subject of poverty. Poverty. The story of success relative to the performance of the Arthur administration on the ground in St. Michael is very much about the matter of addressing poverty in the lives of the people. So we're talking about poverty tonight. We want to look at some of the social, social dynamics or sociological dynamics which constitute impediments to progress in the lives of people, which constitute obstacles to people moving from one level up to the next and enjoying a better standard or a better quality of living. We want to look at some of those things. We want to see where our party has gone, where St. Michael stands this evening, where we need to go tomorrow in the struggle to eradicate poverty in Barbados. I started to say in Bushall, I think it was, not too long ago, that one of the primary contributive causes of poverty in any society, especially societies such as ours, is dysfunction at the level of the family. Dysfunctional family life is a primary contributor to poverty among a people. If you look at life across the landscape of Barbados, that is true. If you bring it into the immediate context of urban Barbados, it is true. 
Dysfunctionality at the level of family life contributes to poverty and poverty which persists. I am of the view, and I said it before, and I will continue to say it, that I believe that an obligation is laid upon the new Barbados Labour Party administration to find a way and find the means to make it possible that families which are conflicted, families in conflict, families under stress, who want to find a recourse or a redress to their issues and their problems, the Arthur administration ought to seek to find a way and means of providing the financial assistance which would help those families to afford that. Middle class families, if they want, can afford that. Poor urban working class families find that challenging to find the money to pay for the professional help they need when their families are in conflict or faced with stresses. And I believe that we need to look to going in that direction. The Barbados Labour Party previously has provided economic financial assistance to public servants who face personal stress on the job who can then have recourse to places like network services so that they can have professional counseling and helping them out of their situations so that they can be productive on the job. If families are under stress, if families are conflicted, are in conflict, if families desire to find an out from that situation of stress, and in poor working class situations in St. Michael or Barbados cannot afford it, then the government needs to see that here is an opportunity for state input in such a way as that can make radical change to life as we know it in urban Barbados. There's another phenomenon, and it has become even more evident as I've gone from house to house canvassing across this constituency. And it has to do with that increasing frequency with which I come upon Households, entire households in which there's nobody at all working. I remember not too long ago visiting a household in that direction. And we went to this place, knocked on the door, were greeted very warmly and cordially, but we got into conversation and the lament presented itself. And it continues to do so, as I said, with increasing frequency. Here is a woman who is saying to us, there are seven of us who live in this house, seven adults of working age, and not a single one is working. With increasing frequency, I come across that. New families, couples newly married, both laid off from their job over the past four or five years. Nobody in the household is working. That induces poverty, a poverty which persists. That impacts on families and households negatively, further impacting upon community and then generally by extension impacting upon a country. A government that understands its duty must think that when we encounter stressful challenges economically such as we are today, it must find the capacity within its bosoms to help such families. And I believe that when we come to office we as a new government should put in place some stipulation that says if ever again Barbados meets the kind of economic stress and challenges that we are up against and where there is this growing phenomenon of households where nobody is working, then government has to provide, it has a duty compulsorily to provide some means of income, guaranteeing some level of income we should remove from this landscape forever the specter of whole households where nobody is working. And I'm not talking about some welfareist program. I'm talking about a meaningful response to a situation that can very quickly spiral out of control and induce poverty. And we're faced with that right now, tonight. And I hear a lot of talk about families first. But I don't hear families first addressing those issues. Then in our culture, there is the phenomenon or dynamic of economic relationships. 
what I call economic relationships. Women who are unemployed and are drawn into social relationships with men because they are dependent upon those men to support them. Sometimes they bring children to that relationship. And that man is expected to help to support those children who are not his. And he does because that is a social culture in which we are thrown together. But the point is this. In a bad economy, the negative impact and fallout from those economic challenges then seriously affects those relationships. A man who is already denuded of his masculinity because he has no job and cannot feed his children and he feels down on his luck and he feels very marginalized, he feels inadequate and far less than a man having been denuded of his maleness stands the risk of losing his female companionship because he has no job. And all I'm trying to say here tonight that when we discuss the politics of development in St. Michael West, we have to address the issue of poverty. And once we start to address the issue of poverty, we have to look at what is happening with our families, whether it is the traditional family of husband and wife and children legally wed in the church, or that social unit of man and woman thrown together in a love relationship that breeds and bears children. These people have to live. And you cannot, you can only live if you have money in your pocket. In spite of what the Prime Minister says, you can only live if you have money in your pockets. And Barbadians in 2013 should not be encouraged to go to the drug pushers, should not be encouraged to go to the criminals to seek the wherewithal to live. A government fails in its duty if it does not respond to poverty by creating the kind of environment in which people's interests can be responded to, their demands met, and their deserts served. And I'm clear in my own mind about that. And the government tells you there's money with the drug pushers or there's money with the criminal element. Is a government wanting to be thrown out of office. So you're going to tell a man who is not in working or who does not have a job that go to the drug pushers and go to the criminals? You can't do that. A government has a, 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 a duty to respond. But I want to talk about this secondly, because we're talking about poverty. Households are a significant unit in any economy. Clyde Maskell already said that tonight. It's not only companies and business interests. Households are a significant component units of any economy. A lot of Barbadian households in urban St. Michael are headed by women. A lot of them are headed by single women. And I have a concern over the plight of single women in Barbados who are heads of households. And this is part of the phenomenon of poverty in urban Barbados. Low wages, long working hours, harsh working conditions, Management insensitivity, sexual harassment. This is the reality that a lot of our women folk who head households in St. Michael face every day. Barbados can play the ostrich and bury its head in the sand. But this is the reality I know. This is the reality of which people speak to me. That on the job, the work is hard, the hours are long. Management is insensitive. If I want to go to the washroom, management wants to know what I am going to the washroom for. Now, if that is not true, tell me that's not true. But I've heard that from a lot of women in Barbados in 2013. You want to tell me some ignorant man down in some industrial plant in some factory in Barbados can ask a young woman in Barbados, what are you going to the toilet for? Management insensitivity, low wages, long hours, bad conditions, sexual harassment. This is the plight of too many women in Barbados. And too many of them suffer silently. And this 
society has a still tongue on these matters. And in 2013, with all of our modern development, with all of our modern strides, I am saying to us, this is something that we need to put behind us. Because these things conduce to a situation where women are exploited and they feel that because of the economic pressure, I can't afford to lose the job. So when the man sexually harasses, I must see to his wishes. And I must put up with whatever they throw my way because I want the job. The Barbados Labour Party must hold the position that we cannot allow our women folk and their dignity to be surrendered on the altars of, politic, of economic expediency, to pander to the interests of fleeting investment. Follow me. Investors come. They are local investors or foreign investors. They want to set up shop. They want labor as cheap as possible. And women without skills, numbered among that large body of unemployed people, gravitate to those jobs. And we cannot afford to allow a situation to persist where they are exploited, where their dignity is eroded. That's all I'm saying. These things conduce to poverty. We cannot allow the dignity to be surrendered on the altar of economic expediency to satisfy the interests of fleeting investors who are here for a while. We cannot allow their dignity to be so eroded by conditions just to facilitate what I call labor convenience, a labor movement that rises up in defense of certain workers at certain times but overlooks the fact that there are a multitude of female workers who head households in this country who are exploited daily on the job and nothing is said about their plight and nothing is done to improve their law. These things conduce to poverty and I am concerned about these things. We can console ourselves by making reference to statistical records that suggests unemployment levels is this or employment levels are that. But we must get past that look which presents itself through those rose rim glasses and see the reality. If the numbers are employed, that is fine. But what is the quality of the job to which they go? What is the condition under which they work? How far can the wages go? I work for a week and then at the week, I still have to beg to support myself or support my family or worse yet, find some attachment to some man who is looking for a situation to exploit that my needs may be met while I incidentally meet his. A third thing is the failure or deficiencies in our education system in Barbados. And I made brief reference to this the other night. We have a system of education of which we are justly proud. But the reality is that only one third of those on whom we spend millions of dollars every year come out of our school system with satisfactory achievement and satisfactory results. That is not good enough for the investment. That in itself conduces to persistent poverty. Because we, we, we pay for people's education. They go through the system. They come out in the floor. And only one third of them achieve satisfactorily. That in itself conduces to poverty in its persistent characterization. The point I'm making is this. Said it before, I'll say it again. I believe the, the vision, the vision of Errol Barrow, the vision of Grantley Adams, pioneers of modern education in Barbados, Adam started free education. Barra popularized and expanded, democratized free education in Barbados. We have to give Jack his jacket. But the truth is that that vision of education and the model that came with it have both outlived their day. That vision, if applied today, is seen to be narrow in its relevance. And therefore, we have to recast a vision for education in this Barbados. We have to move with this goal in mind that we are going to see as an outcome 
a productive citizen who becomes a well-rounded person and not simply a worker in permanent waiting for a job. Our system today, in too many instances, is producing permanent workers. It's producing workers in permanent waiting for a job. They used to be found at the secondary school level. They are now being found at the university level. Too many people coming out of our tertiary level systems can't find jobs, have to accept some menial form of, of, of job as we define a menial form of job. We have to recast that vision. We have to reinstitutionalize the system to take out of the system which currently serves our needs and throws up the current situation. We have to reinstitutionalize our education system to take out of that system the elitist differentials that exist. The elitist differentials that exist. A guy who grows up in Barbados today, who went to school at St. Leonard's or Parkinson, should be able to walk these streets with the hope and aspiration and dream in his breast that one of these days he could be prime minister of this country. We have to bring to an end the elitist differentials in our system which suggests that prime ministers of Barbados can only come out of Harrison College or Combermere. Or Lodge. Or Cool Region Parry. Hello. My apologies to all the college boys and girls. All the calm here boys and girls. But we have to take out the elitist differentials in the system. We have to recast the vision. We have to reinstitutionalize the system. We have to revalue skills in Barbados. We have to look on skills in Barbados with a new sense of value and see skills for what they are and recognize that all of what we bring to the table goes into the mix to take this country forward. And we can't devalue certain skills and confine certain people to the category of second-class citizens based on the job that they do or the skill that they bring to the... We have to revalue those skills. It happens in developed countries upon which we want to model ourselves. So we need to recast, we need to reinstitutionalize. We need to review our curriculum to make it more pertinent, more relevant, of course. And we need to make sure that we remove stigmatization where it, it exists. We need to pay some attention to the non-formal education system in Barbados. People are being socialized differently today. Used to be traditionally that the agencies primarily responsible for socialization was the home, the school, and the church. Today, there are a multitude of other agents of socialization all around us. And people are not only being socialized within the confines and privacy of the home, or the walls of the school, or the sanctity of the church. People are being socialized in community groups. They're being socialized on block corners in Barbados. And a lot of non-formal education is taking place in Barbados. And we need, as a new government, to examine this business of the non-formal education system which has sprung up around us in Barbados and see the positives that are inherent to that and draw on these positive. If we fail to do that, we will lose this society. Because people are not being socialized in the traditional ways. But we come with the traditional approaches. There's a whole form, a whole, a whole, a whole ocean of non-formal dynamics operating out there that are socializing people. And the Barbarian Party needs to take note. I have said and I believe we need deliberately as a government to employ people whose job it will be every day to interact with boys on the block, to interact with the leaders of the boys on the block, to feel their pulse because they understand what they're doing, they understand what they're about, they understand where these fellows are, and they want to lift them. And we need to look at these things. That building at the back of us, that building at the back of us, 
is now dedicated to the use not only for the people in St. Michael West, them first, but any others who want to benefit from a process of education in a formal sense and skills training back there. But we will also embrace the non-formal agencies of education in our society to make sure that that facility back there is not only a building to which you come once a week for constituency clinic, it is not only an electric headquarters as it is tonight, but that is a community facility back there dedicated, dedicated to the training and development of young people in this community and this country. And it's not only non-formal education initiatives that will take place there, but we will em embrace the non-formal as well. It's not only the formal, we will embrace the non-formal as well. We need to reach people where they are. We have a minister who has given to us as his ultimate policy submission a document on human resource development for Barbados, a plan. It remains a program which is uncertain and a program which is unfunded. No idea of where the funds will come from. No certainty to the initiatives being proposed. Yet it is his masterpiece for the development of human resources in this country. I'm talking about the Minister of Education and Human Resources. A man called Jones, who I have said before and I believe with all my heart, is engaged in a form of jonesing that brings no merriment to the young people of this country. None whatsoever. Jonesing will not cut it and Jones does not cut it. And so we have to be serious about education. This point is also very relevant. There are some people who look at poverty as an opportunity to politic. And they use something called patronage and clientelism or client relations. So you patronize the boys down the road. And the fellas up the corner are your clients. And every now and then you drive through. And you may give them a bottle of rum, cheap rum at that. Or you may give them a bottle of whatever they're drinking, the cheaper variety all the time. And sometimes you go beyond the rum and you bring small bits of money. Or you decide on the eve of election, you're going to paint a cemetery wall in bright yellow. Bright yellow. A yellow bright enough to wake up the dead. You decide you are going to paint a cemetery wall in past down Westbury Road. The wall is so long and so tall, they ran out of paint. And trust me when I tell you, there are a lot of dead people in Westbury Cemetery tonight who are vexed and upset because they attempted in the first place to paint the wall a bright yellow and then they ran out of... If you cannot plan with respect to painting a wall, if you cannot manage the process of painting a wall, what else can you manage? If you believe the needs of the dead could be served in this way and you fail in your attempt to serve the needs of the dead how can you serve the needs of the living <laughs> patronage they want to dispense and that is the way they look at poverty and that is the way they respond you see this business of constituency councils this is representative. That is the ultimate manifestation of persons who see poverty as an opportunity to play politics with the lives of people. Alpha Holder has told you about the checks issued. I heard about them too, issued down in St. Michael West at Christmas time. I was not as wise as Alpha Holder to go and look for one and get one or get so I don't have any. But I know people who told me, without a doubt, they received the $100 check at Christmas from a constituency count. These are poor people being exploited through a flimsy attempt at patronage to get their favor. That is what that is about. People see poverty as that type of opportunity. Some people do. Bill payments. School supplies downtown. All of these things are coming from the bosom of constituency councils in a context of poor accountability. Alpha Holder has told you about that. In a context of discriminatory selection of persons. So you get your friends and you get your supporters 
or you look for houses with four votes or six votes or eight votes and you give them a hundred dollar check or you buy a few, few, few school supplies. This is a corruption. This is a corruption of the business of dispensing patronage in a way to, in, a, in, a, in an attempt to exploit people in their conditions of prayer. That is what these constituency councils are about. It's the ultimate manifestation of those who see politics in this way. Did you recognize now that anytime somebody, somebody in St. Michael West gets a house, the whole of Barbados knows? Do you know that when I was represented for St. Michael West, I heard Arthur Holder said I did about 60-something houses for poor people in it. He was wrong. He told you a lie. It was not the truth. I did over 70 houses in St. Michael West. He has not heard about all of them. And not a man was seen on television receiving a key. But they're living in their houses tonight. In Heinz Bay Road. In Garden Land. In Bank Hall. In Maniland. In Passage Road. In Gills Gap. In All Kings. Even in Peter King. You understand? In Richmond. In Goodland. In Paris Gap. All over the place. You find these houses. And people live in comfort. Not a man was seen on television getting keys. This man has been able, with the help of his government, to build about three or four houses. And in every instance, the television cameras must come and you must see the key. You see, this to me eats at the dignity of people. This to me demonstrates a strong disrespect for people. It's an exploitation of poverty in its basis form. Basis fashion. And some people treat the poverty like that. But there are other people who treat the poverty in a strategic way. Prime Master tonight told you about the reverse tax credits that the Oedafa administration implemented. It means that because of the VAT, things became a bit more expensive to some. And even though they themselves were not called upon to pay income tax, the government still at the end of the year reverse a tax credit and give them back some money, money which they did not pay in taxes in, the, in income taxes in the first place. That is a strategic response to the question of poverty. That is treating people like people. We put on a VAT, we realize it might be a bit painful, so we reverse the tax credit to give a credit to persons at the lowest end of the economic ladder. What, has the, what have these guys done? They have increased the VAT. It's killing all of us except them, of course, because they grow fat and fatter every day. And rather than remove it after the 18 months as they promised, it is still on our backs today. And this present government will die next week and that vat will still be in place. But if I understand my leaders correctly, help is on the way. And that vat will be reduced and that addition will be reversed. It was the Barbados Labour Party government that upscaled and elevated the status of many people doing what were considered to be menial tasks in the public sector of Barbados. There were maids and janitors and maintenance people called casual workers, second class citizens, quote unquote, in employment terms. The Barbados Labour Party administration by legislation changed the status of those people. That is treating the people in a dignified fashion that is responding to poverty in a strategic way. This is not smoke and mirrors. This is a real deal and treating people in a real fashion. By legislation, the Barbados Labour Party implemented the Urban Tenantries Program in St. Michael. And one of the biggest beneficiaries of that program in St. Michael have been the people of St. Michael West. And all across this constituency, people came into ownership of their land with the help of the Urban Development Commission and the humble efforts of Joseph Affley. This government has come. That effort has stalled. Urban is not conveying land to people anymore. They say they have no money. But I have news for you. Next week, that government dies. Next week, a new government comes to office. And in this place called Barbados, and in this place called St. Michael West, we will renew and with new vigor that program of the urban conveyance of land ownership titles to people all across St. Michael West. Look, I gotta stop. 
I am a decent chap, I think. I play by the rules. They didn't put me up at 7 o'clock tonight when nobody was here. They didn't bring me on tonight at quarter past 11 when everybody was gone. They gave me peace in the middle after the big boss and I got two extra minutes for which I thank them. I thank you for listening. I promise you a better tomorrow with the help of the Barbados Labour Party and with the help of the Lord. May God bless you. We go with Joe. We go with Joe. Reverend Joe Anthony. That's your next representative. Sir Michael West. Let's hear it for Reverend Joe Anthony. One more time. St. Michael West, you know, before I bring on the next speaker, I walk through the crowd just now, you know, and the lady says, Mark, 